more love, more joy, everything. It's inspired young people. Inspiration comes from within you. When you clear out the garbage that's in your mind, you then create space for something better, more beautiful to come in. Let's have life and have it more abundantly. I say yes. It's like taking a workshop. I get to be in my pajamas. We have a very active imagination, which is why it's important to learn how to harness it and then point it in the direction you want to go. I listen to your show every day. It's time now for Living Your Inspired Life with Susan Burrell. Susan is no-nonsense, inspirational, motivational, and fun. This is positive talk radio. Practical wisdom for everyday life. It's a gift you give yourself. Now, here's Susan. And welcome to Living Your Inspired Life. I'm Susan Burrell, and you're listening to News Talk 1590 KVTA. And I just want to say, we're already affirming it everywhere I go, My te- the Living Your Inspired Life team, everyone, 2015, 2015 is going to be the best year ever. Just affirming it, and I'm affirming it for everybody out there that's listening to this show today. Uh, it, it just is, because uh, last year I have so many people that I've been working with, clients, and myself included, that it was just a, an up and down, challenging, rough year. So... 2015, the best year ever. Why not? Why not? So with that in mind, we're I'm talking today about finding your new happy. Last year, we did a lot of talking about finding your new normal. What's the new normal after you go through uh, challenges and, and things like that? How do you reset your life to find what is going to be your next uh, way of expressing yourself in a way that feels quote unquote normal. But I want to up the game this year for 2015. I want to say, what is your new happy? I'm going to ask that question because I've been asking it of myself. What makes me happy? Because I, I having gone through uh, personal challenges, which I think everybody does, it's, you know, the crawling through the glass or hanging on with your fingernails or whatever it is. There comes a place where, at least for me, and I can only speak for me, I want to know I want to be happy. And I what I was realizing coming out of this uh, two to three years of just yucky yuck, that I realized I really didn't have a marker of what happy meant to me anymore. I didn't even know. I mean, the, the, the way I thought I was being happy was really kind of in that mind numbing place of, okay, I'm just getting through life. And wow, I had a laugh there. So maybe I'm happy. Or wow, that was kind of fun for a millisecond. Maybe I'm happy. But now coming through all of the, the mm, ugliness of the last few years and, and really being able to stand fully awake and aware in my new yet-to-be, I realized I, did, I needed to create new markers of what is my new happy. What makes me happy now with who I am now and what I've learned about myself? And so I'm going to ask you, as you're listening today, you might want to even just write some stuff down. What is it you think makes you happy? And then and then really kind of feel into it and see, is this really something that truly makes me happy now? Because the thing that I'm noticing is there comes a place where all the stuff that came before this present moment doesn't necessarily fit into my new daily life. So it's almost like at some point, we get to wake up and go, wow, that entire chapter of my life is done, and I'm just going to close the book on that one. I'm going to start a new book. I'm going to start a new chapter of my life, and I'm going to call it part one of the new chapter of my life. And in that, I'm going to decide and discern what makes me happy now, because those of us that have lived life a little bit longer than others, we have life experience that, you know, what was making me happy in my teens or my 20s is not the thing that's going to make me hap- happy in the middle part of my life. It, it just isn't, you know. So what makes you happy now? Not what made you happy yesterday or a year from a year ago, but what makes you happy right now? And it might be just as simple as being able to go for a walk and look at the sky or it might be as simple as having a really good cup of coffee in the morning before you start your day maybe that makes you happy maybe laughing with friends makes you happy maybe dancing makes you happy or singing or whatever in fact i would invite that the thing that makes us happy is the thing is the place where we get to create from in the creativity of life we begin to explore all of those unknown parts of ourselves and go okay maybe 
maybe I'm going to explore more of this create creativity place and see how that makes me feel. I know uh, as an artist, uh, oftentimes when I'm facing a blank canvas or, or a blank page to write on, I, I, there, the panic starts to happen. Oh my gosh, what if what I'm creating isn't good enough? Or what, it, you know, all those thoughts. What if it's not perfect? Or what if it, it looks weird when I'm done or sounds weird when I'm done or, or whatever? And, and we tend to stop ourselves or limit ourselves with, with those kinds of feelings. So I, as I'm looking at what makes me happy, I'm beginning to understand that risking Risking, uh, not in the place of bungee jumping off a cliff, because there's no way in this lifetime I'm ever going to do that, but the place where I risk a little emotionally or risk a little creatively or risk a little in terms of, wow, I haven't done this particular thing before in this new way, so let me do that and feel see what it feels like. So... My new happy is, for those of you out there as you're contemplating yours, is to really live my life grounded in a place of open-hearted love. And we've talked about this on Living Your Inspired Life many times, that that place of love, not romantic love, not, you know, touchy-feely love, but, or ooh-ooh, woo-woo love, but that place of um, self-love that place of self-acceptance and self-love. And that makes me happy now when I can open my heart to other people or, or, or just to be in nature open-hearted or with my dog, uh, that kind of love just fills every cell of my body and I feel good about me. And that makes me happy. So then I circled back into, in this whole contemplation of what makes me happy into this idea that there is no one outside of me that can make me happy. Okay, let's say that again. I, you know, let's see if we can get that. There is no one outside of you that can make you happy. The only place you can come from true happiness is from the inside out, from within yourself. And that means kind of excavating all those ugly, dark shadow places that you never want to touch or feel because you know the boogeyman's living there. You want to excavate that stuff. You you want to explore it and see what really is living in those shadows. Because in my experience over the last few years, those shadow places of myself where I really thought the gremlin was that was going to get me if I didn't watch out was really parts of myself I had disenfranchised. I had, I had dissed, you know, I had said, nope, never again, and you get to go sit over there in the darkness, and I'm not shining any light on you. And what I found over the course of the last couple of years is it's important to look at those places within yourself that you have disassociated out of fear, out of shame, out of anger, out of sorrow, grief, whatever it is, out of guilt, because those are the places that are holding you back from really being happy. Those are the things that keep you anchored in your past that has nothing to do with who you are now, except that it brought you to this moment. And in those places where you're anchored in your past, you don't get to move forward happy. You get to move forward like a Marley's ghost with all those chains rattling and all of that into your future, dragging all your garbage with you. So why not move into a place where you can find your happiness with un- unencumbered, unentangled. And I really think that that comes from, from within you. And I, so I have a quote by Abraham Hicks that I, I love to read that speaks a little bit about happiness in relationship to other people. And it's about our self-happiness. And Abraham Hicks says, the greatest gift you could ever give to another is your own happiness. For when you are in a state of joy, happiness or appreciation you are fully connected to the stream of pure positive source energy that is truly who you are and when you are in that state of connection anything or anyone that you are holding as your object of attention benefits from your attention so when we're happy the people that we're with are raised up into happiness too i mean kind of simple isn't it yeah And when we're focusing on our inner happiness, that's not being selfish. That's being uh, self-respecting 
because in our self-appreciation, then that happiness meter grows and resonates out and it touches everyone and everything that you're interacting with. So in the idea of not dragging your past into your future or, or, or any of that stuff, I want to do um, a short guided meditation for everyone. And I call this the butterfly meditation. And as we go through it, you'll begin to understand why. So uh, if you will, I'm just going to ask you to get centered. If you're driving, you're going to have to go to livingyourinspiredlife.org when you get home and listen to this over again. You might want to have a piece of paper with you to write some things down, but just get centered within yourself. So we're going to do, we're going to start now by taking a deep breath, grounding yourself and exhaling, and then taking another deep breath right into the center of who you are and opening your heart and relaxing. And another deep breath, allowing that heart space just to open and fill your body and your mind, allowing all the cells to release whatever is no longer serving you while you are breathing this breath. And now, in your mind, I want you to take an inventory, if you will, of everything in your life that happened, maybe just happened in 2014, maybe your entire life, whatever you feel comfortable with. And I want you to look at the things that you feel good about within yourself, about yourself, from those circumstances or experiences that you had. And just make a mental note of that. You know, maybe you feel good because you, you help support somebody in their next expression. Maybe you feel good because you completed a, a job successfully or you started a new job. Maybe you feel good because you've been able to pay your bills throughout the year. Whatever that feeling good about yourself is. And then write some of those things down, if you will, or make a mental note. I feel good because I was in integrity. I feel good because I was kind. I feel good because I forgave. Whatever those things are. And just allow yourself to be with that for a moment. And then the other piece of this is maybe there's some things you don't feel good about yourself that happened in your past. What are those things? And, and I want the feeling tones of those things. I feel, I feel sad because I treated somebody poorly or I feel guilty because I didn't do this thing I said I was going to do or I feel whatever that is for you. Just make a note of it. This is not about judging yourself. It's just allowing that shadow side, the the sticky stuff in the corners of your mind that are in the shadow just to come up into the light. Because as Bre Brene Brown says, if you can name it, then it goes away. It diminishes the power it has over you. So looking at the things that you liked about yourself and looking at the things that in hindsight you might have done differently. Good. Now taking another breath, breathing in, and exhaling. Then I want you to put your attention on your yet to be, on, on the place you haven't gone yet in your life, on your future, if you will, on the next expression of how you want to live. And what are the things you would want to call into your, into your experience, into your soul, into your heart, into the into who you are, things that maybe you haven't been fully yet. Maybe, maybe you haven't been that place of loving kindness as much as you would like. So perhaps that's what you want to focus your attention on, that place of loving kindness. Or maybe there's a place where you haven't been peaceful in your heart. Maybe there's a place where you've been rushing too much to get way too many things done in the outer world and not enough time just to sit in the stillness and be with yourself. What are the things and what are the feeling tones you want to experience in your next yet to be? And just make a mental note or write them down. I want to be happy. I want to be open hearted. I want to be forgiving, whatever that is for you. 
And then also you might take this opportunity now to look at the things that you know, the behaviors or the thought forms that you know within your heart no longer serve you. Like perhaps it's, it no longer serves me to, to rush to judgment about somebody I just see in the market or walking down the street. Or it no longer serves me to run 15 minutes late every sing to every single appointment. Or it no longer serves me to, when I think about a particular person in my life that I feel angry about, it no longer serves me to be angry with that person. Whatever that is that no longer serves you, because we want to create your future without a lot of the sticky shadow stuff that's in the corners. We want to make it open and light-filled. So just notice what those things are. The things you want more of in your life and the things that no longer serve you. Good. That's good. So now I invite you to come into the center between both of those places. And that is, that is the place of the butterfly. That is the place where the chrysalis has broken open. And as you look at what happened up until now and you're yet to be, those are the different wings on the butterfly. And you stand in the center of that, allowing those wings to spread in the multifaceted colors that they are, that you are, and allowing both sides to come together into that place of wholeness, into that place of self-realization that all what has happened before and what's about to happen is all good in this moment, in this is-ness of being. And allow yourself to experience that feeling of flight, that feeling of freedom, that feeling of happiness, because you are free, free to live this next expression of your life from a place of intention, from a place of well-being, from a place of self-expression. Good. And so bringing yourself back to this time, this place, wherever you are, allowing yourself to take a deep breath again, feeling fully integrated, fully at one, fully whole, right here and now. Taking a breath in and being fully present with what is, as it is. So I wanted to do that meditation for everybody because I feel like, it, for me, when I've done it for myself, it feels like it's a great way to have closure on what was and to really kind of feel into what I want to experience and express as opposed to intellectually making up my goals, you know, and here's, here's, here's what I'm going to do in 2015. That, uh, for me, helps me to begin to define... Uh, what it is I want my next uh, daily expression to be. And some of the things that, uh, some of the people that we've had on Living Your Inspired Life in the past have have all, have, uh, all been pointing to the sa same thing of what is it that we can do to be happy? And there are certain things that we have to pay attention to, which is about the inner, uh, our inner world, our inner self, our inner esteem. And um, Emily Rufus, who was on our show, said that self-esteem might be the world's most precious commodity. And I think that's because a, a lot of us walk around this world having just a monochrome, a, a, a mini, mini, mini molecule of self-esteem. And we don't even know that that's how we're walking around because we're so busy trying to get the things done that we think we have to get done. And then we come home at night feeling bereft and we don't know why. And what I'm beginning to be fully aware of is that bereavement is because I'm not living my life from a place of happiness, of open-hearted happiness. I'm living it. I was living it up until now from a place of getting things done and ticking off the 
goal list and am I successful yet? Wait, let me look again. Am I successful yet? Wait, let me look. Am I, you know, and, and that whole spinning in one place as opposed to self-expression and, uh, and really uh, finding how I want to create my life. So I have a quote from Ernest Holmes, one of my mentors, and he says, you rob no one when you discover your own good. You limit no person when you express a greater degree of livingness. You harm no one by being happy. You steal from no one by being prosperous. You hinder no person's evolution when you consciously enter into the kingdom of your good and possess it today. Your endeavor is not to locate the divine presence or waken the activity of the law. It is rather to become aware of this presence and of its activity flowing through you right now. So I think that part of, for me, as I said earlier, the, this happiness factor, my new happy, is about being in a place of creative connection within myself and really acting on the thing I hear within myself to do. And this could look like, this could look like making a phone call, hearing somebody's voice, you know, your friend's name, say, I'm hearing my friend's name, or maybe I should call that person, maybe I need to act on that, and then acting on it, or having an urge to uh, go for a walk, you know what, maybe I should go for a walk, but wait, I'll do it when I'm done, no, get up and go for a walk now, or having an urge to draw, I mean, I, when we were children, okay, when I was a kid, one of the things I loved to do was play with Play-Doh, now, I never made anything spectacular out of the Play-Doh, but it was fun to play with the Play-Doh and, and do silly things with it. And same with coloring or drawing. So perhaps it might be time to get a box of Play-Doh or a box of crayons and maybe circle back to places in your childhood. If it was paint by numbers, get some paint by numbers. But circle back into your childhood where there, where there was a more of a freedom of self-expression that as we become adults and we live life and we've got our to-do list and our mortgages or our car payments or our kids to raise or the laundry to fold, we forget that the fundamental place where children are happy comes from their connection to their creativity. Whether it's making up names for their dolls or, or making up a freeway for their trucks to drive on or just running around a, a playground playing tag and finding creative ways to hide from everybody, which is what my son used to do. But, but that place of childlike creativity and bringing that into our adult world, our adult expression, I think is a place where you can tap into what it is you uh, need to experience in order to be happy, in order to feel that. And as something else that I've been uh, opening up to is um, that place of gratitude. Because the, in, the, in the happiness, I'm noticing I have more gratitude. And in the gratitude, there's more of a connected flow to my creativity. And then, you know, and then it all keeps circling and, and surrendering into fun. I, I think for a lot of adults, the fun factor gets kind of... Um, put on to thank God it's Friday and now I can have fun idea you know thank God it's the weekend so I don't have to be so whatever it is I have to do during the week and I can have fun but what if we could have fun every day what if we could be happy every day what if we could enjoy our lives instead of struggling through our lives what would that look like what would that look like for you to choose to enjoy instead of struggle to choose to put your attention on, on um, more love in your life, love of loving yourself first and then expressing that out in the world. What would that look like for you? Maybe it looks like uh, spending time on the floor with your children, doing whatever it is they're doing. Maybe it looks like helping an elderly neighbor by doing some grocery shopping for them May, or just... Uh, mowing their lawn or something like that what, what would it look like that is that connects you to happiness that connects you to fun that connects you to your childlike that childlike innocence that we all have and we've forgotten about or we've allowed our uh, 
life up until now. We've allowed our life to kind of grind it out of us. What if we could reestablish that fun factor within our lives on a regular basis, on a daily basis? Now, some of this sounds like a, a, a daily practice. I think it is. You know, we, where your attention goes, the energy flows. So if you choose to put your attention on uh, the happiness factor and how you want to be happy in 2015, then it will become a daily practice for you. It will evolve into something more than just a weekend thing and wow, that was fun because we went to the party or we got to see the sunset or went for the hike or, you know, wow, that was fun. No, how about we do this every day? Having, having a practice of happiness and fun every day. Wow, wouldn't that be great? What, that would be the best year ever if we could do that together and collectively. Wow, how awesome is that? So we're talking about finding my new happy, your new happy in 2015. You're listening to Living Your Inspired Life. I'm Susan Burrell. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Susan Burrell from Living Your Inspired Life. I always find it easier and more fun to expand my life by being connected to open-hearted, like-minded people committed to being on the same path I am. If you feel the same way, I suggest you visit a Center for Spiritual Living. There are wonderful communities in Ventura, Ojai, Santa Barbara, Oxnard, Pleasant Valley, Camarillo, and Westlake Village. You'll find terrific people, great information, and more tools to help you live the life you were born to live. So go to csl.org to find a center near you. That's csl.org for a center near you. Welcome back to Living Your Inspired Life. I'm Susan Burrell. If you've missed anything uh, in this recording, you can go to livingyourinspiredlife.org and get tuned in and tuned up to develop your power perspective and your sense of happiness because we're talking today about the new happy. What is my new happy? What is your new happy going to be for 2015? And I asked... uh, Tom Spence, my sound engineer, to come on because during the break he brought up something. I was talking earlier about moving into that place of childlike happiness and and maybe revisiting things that you did as a child and bring that into your adult life now. And Tom, you said that as adults we don't, uh, we aren't able to do that because... It seems like we do compared to when we're kids, when we're happy in the moment and generally having a lot of fun continuously. When we get older, it's, oh, I can't wait for Thanksgiving because then I'll be able to relax. So if you say that, let's say in September, you've just kind of blown off about 60 days of your life to get through to the next thing. And you've admitted to yourself, this is going to be difficult, but I'm going to make it through because that's when I'm going to be happy. And I always thought time passed faster when you get older, not because of something that's actually, you know, physical in your body, you know, within, you know, just your your system. It's more on what your goals are and where your happiness is. So if you always look, oh, I can't wait for my birthday, it's going to be great. Well, if your birthday's in mid-July and you say that in June, what have you just done? And it, rather than being happy in the moment and trying to be happy as you're going, it's all these goals. And so if you have four goals in a year, bup, 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 and just oh, the, where did the year go? Right. Because you were focusing on all these like clothespins that are holding your life up across this line rather than, hey, today's going to be great because we're actually today, this moment, even let's exaggerate crazy. You get to work at it. Can't wait to lunch. Right. I can't wait to lunch. So you've just blown off four hours rather than think, hey, what can we do to make this better? And, ha- and be happy at it. Yeah, and, and that's it. Not And making it better. And what you said during the meditation that I, I really liked is that old, it's from the inside, the outside. Because sure, somebody could come into the house and say, I have tickets for the Fleetwood Mac show. I have King's tickets. Let's go. Yay. And they're your buddy and they just made you happy. But when they leave, you know, what yeah, happens? Then you're sad. You fall off the shelf again. Right. So here's, mm-hmm. it, here's what I've been experiencing re- recently because of redefining my new happy. I, and not knowing that I how really unhappy I had been is that place where I want to be especially aware that my happiness comes from within me that so that I'm not outsourcing my happiness to somebody else you know having having just uh, finished a very 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 contentious uh, divorce hello 
I get to now see, okay, I was outsourcing my happiness to my ex-husband. Well, if he would only make me happy, then I'll be happy, you know? And he kept saying, what if you would get that everything's okay? And I kept thinking, well, then I'll be happy. But, you know, I never connected the dots that my happiness, and this is true for everyone, I think, our happiness is independent of anyone out in our world. It is, I am not going to be happy because my son is happy. I'm going to be happy because I'm happy. And my son gets to have whatever experience he has, or, you know, my friends or my parent, whatever. They get to have their experience. But I'm not going to make my son happy. You can't make, any, you can't force somebody to be happy if they don't want to be happy, right? Yeah, or you're constantly, let's go to Disneyland, and you feel this obligation to create these things all the time. And that is a lose, lose, lose proposition. Like the first date, you take, uh, you know, the, the significant, the soon to be significant other to a concert, to a great dinner, then a great drive. Then, well, you're just blowing it up. If you can't just say, hey, why don't we uh, go for a little hike over here and, you know, talk for a couple hours up and down. If you're always looking like, boy, what am I going to do to the beat that into top? Yeah, and to have something like it's got to be a concert, a comedy club. It's got to be something magnificent and incredible rather than perhaps you're, you're just sitting there in, enjoying that moment. And as with everything, people say, well, that's so, but it's so absolutely true. Yes, yeah. and, and, but, and most of us don't know, unless we, we do some sort of a, a meditative uh spiritual practice if you will to really connect within ourselves most of us don't realize that we're just running around like a bunch of ants on an ant farm pushing grains of sand and and meeting somebody else's agenda and the thing that i'm coming to understand is what you were just saying earlier tom about this happiness factor is more about being present in every moment being in the isness of life the beingness of life and time really does expand. That has been my experience recently. When I'm having fun and being happy, it two hours feels like two days. Mm -hmm. And then when it's over, the residual from that happy fun stuff lasts for another, you know, couple of hours or couple of days, whatever. Because I had, I got my inner, uh, my inner, um, uh inner juice is going my happiness juice you know it's like I'm on the Kool-Aid now the happiness Kool-Aid it was getting filled up I got filled up because I had that time of being fully present with happiness and not judging it not going well you know I'm happy now but you know in the next minute I'm not going to be happy or in the next minute I'm going to be you know with somebody else or doing something different and they're not going to make me happy that's why it's important to find your happiness within you so that you can be with anybody even the people that uh, irritate you mm -hmm. and still be present and happy and kind and loving and all those things. I haven't seen the movie yet, but I'm going to move into two areas of pop culture here. Wild, uh, yep. where, where she goes on this crazy backpacking journey on the Pacific Crest Trail. Yep. Anybody familiar? That's a long trail. It's that's a California. Honk and it long goes forever. Trail. It goes through and forever. Just try it sometime and see how you are with yourself. Go for a walk. Don't don't bring. The device. Don't, don't bring, bring any music, cell phones. No, nothing. And and just no earbuds. Just go along and just see. Are you are you okay with that? Can can you make it? Because the other thing, it was pretty sped up in our youth, and now it's ridiculous. Now it's on it's on the cliche of steroids. Because when we were younger, things were really starting to pick up and really move, and and people only had these little moments, and and news went from long form to thirty second sound bites, and it just goes so fast and. That's another issue with happiness. It's just so rapid, and people are burning things out so quickly. You know, it's really a wonderful thing. I, I run a little bit, and if you can get out there and just run without the earbuds in, if you could just go for a nice walk and just see, are, are, are you okay with that? And it's, it's an interesting test to give yourself and, and see, you know, what it is that will— you know, bring, bring joy or happiness or whatever it is. And it's not always, uh, and the other pop culture thing I'm going to bring in here because of something you just said, American Idol. There's yeah. so many kids when they go on that show, if I could just get this, and you think these kids, like, if you go back to Alabama, are you ruined? I, I know, mean, they're, at they're age like, 18. Yeah, and they're saying, if I have this, this is everything. If I don't get the, and you think you're, everything is, is hooked on that, and 
I look at this and say, you're nuts. But then I look at myself and say, you know, I, I have the same issues sometimes. If my boss, the higher up, we, we have a ratings period in radio. If my ratings aren't good. If this, if, if that, oh, it'll just be horrific. Well, will it really, you know, will it really be that? So, again, that's an outside power that I'm, I'm handing you're myself outso- to. You're yeah. outsourcing your power to. To that, rather than just saying, you know what? We did a heck of a job. We had a fun time. Let's see how the the ratings go. Let's see how the audience, and we'll just carry on and make adjustments as we go, rather than just handing it over. If I get that, you know, evaluation from the boss and it's got a lot of boxes checked that I don't, oh, you know what? And that that's well, one of the things you say. I love that outsourcing your, your happiness. And it, it's something uh, we see... All the, in our all own the lives and all over TV. Everywhere. Everybody's Everywhere. looking for their mm-hmm. next review at their job, the thing that's going to say, okay, yeah, you get another buck 50 extra. Yeah. You the know. evil, was it good for you? Right. You know, it's it's that type right. of thing rather than saying, Man, that was great. I'm, I'm happy as heck. I actually, this this worked. And so uh, it's it's a practice that I'm, I'm one, going to have to figure out. And, well, and, uh, two, and then, because yeah. I know you now, you got to do it. Right. And that's 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 the rub. So, you know, where do you go from here when you drive home, perhaps after this show? Certainly uh, turn off your radio. Just just drive for about Tom 30 Spence miles. Is suggesting you turn <laughs> yeah. off your radio. Yes. Just, and drive for 30 with no sound except you. No kids in the nothing. And just see, you know, how are you with that? Well, here's the thing uh, I notice about that kind of a, a practice is we I I'll just talk from me. I always my mind is so busy. And I'm multitasking constantly. Hello, anybody out there do that? Multitasking constantly. When I go for a walk in nature, I have literally got to stand still and look at a tree Mm -hmm. or look at the sky or a mountain and go, okay, I am here now. Because I'll walk for half an hour and my mind is going blah, 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 to do, to do, to do. And all of a sudden I I realize I've just same with driving. I, I can be quiet in the car. I mean, I can have the music off. But I'm not quiet in the car. My mind is going a mile a minute trying to figure out all these other things. It, it keep, Our minds are so powerful. It keeps us occupied so that we, like you were saying earlier, it's almost like uh, it keeps – that's why time speeds up because my mind is constantly going. Instead of being in the quiet, in the silence, and just noticing – as I'm walking, oh, look at that pretty tree, or wow, it smells really good out here in the fresh air, or, you know, whatever it is, the mind speeds everything up. And then I'm at my destination, and I didn't even experience the ride. Mm -hmm. And that's my, and that is, actually, I'm so grateful you brought that up, Tom, because that's part of what I want my new happy to be, is to be in the experience of the ride, enjoying the journey, not getting to the end of the journey and saying, Thank God, and now I get to plant my flag and say I did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's uh, it's another issue with running that a lot of people have. You're looking at, uh, okay, I'm training today because I'm going to run a race three months from now. So even then, you're, you're projecting forward rather than uh, loving the moment. What do they say? You don't dance to get to the end of the song mm-hmm. is, is one of the – it's a great way to look at it. But again, if you can go out there and, and just just try it sometime and really just shut everything down. The new other thing about these phones, and I have mine right here, it's a new universal sound because I think they did it in a in a new upgrade. But ting. Oh, my gosh. When people are getting When people are getting I'm like Pavlov's now. dog. Yeah. And it's that, that little, it's like somebody hit a crystal yep. glass with a flick. And so now you're in a room, ding, ding, ding. And you're wondering, well, what was that? Instead right. of, and that brings in more. Stuff. It takes you out of the moment. Right. It takes you out of being present because all of a sudden now you, you there's something I've got to look at. I've got to address. I've got to see. Who was that? Oh, it wasn't my phone. It was your phone. So what is my practice? What do you suggest? And we'll go to the Grateful Dead as, as I leave my <laughs> thoughts with this just because I love a line from a song we talked about during the break. And it's, uh, I might be going to hell in a bucket, but at least I'm enjoying the ride. The process that even Jerry Garcia and the gang, they knew it was like, they were they were on this crazy ride, but boy, are they having fun doing it. And so, having that moment from Victor Frankel, can you quote anybody better, Victor Frankel to Jerry Garcia? I, I know, I You're and really only spanning. you would be able to draw those analogies. Yeah, but, I love that. So, what is our practice? Well, so the so part of what it is, I think, is in defining what your new happy is for 2015, is being okay when the stuff shows up because stuff. It's not like we're gonna. Uh, be happy and own our way into life 
for the rest of our lives. The, the, life is definitely a roller coaster ride. Hello. And any of us that have lived long enough get that. So so it doesn't matter. There'll be times when you're white knuckling it in the front seat. There'll be other times where you're just cruising into the the station going, oh, thank God that ride's over. But being in the place of happy as much as possible while you're going through those rides is the, at least this is my choice for 2015 for me, is I want to be as happy as I can be now in all the stuff that is my life, in all the the good stuff, the sweet stuff, the ugly stuff. I want to find those moments of happiness more and more often as opposed to where I just crawled out of, which was being in the dark pit of despair, crawling through glass. I mean, there will be moments in my life, I'm sure, that I will have those experiences again. But I want to develop my happiness factor so that when I do have to go into those places of dark stuff, I have a buoy. I have, I have, a, I have a life raft that I can hold on to. And it's not going to be uh, something that's outside of myself. Does that make sense to you, Tom? Uh, yeah, it certainly does. I see does. you want to say something. Well, it, it's it's that that experience. So it's like, how do you do that? When we think of, and again, because I am sports minded and sports oriented, if you look at somebody who tries to play football and they try to play high school and they try to play college and they try to play pro, then they play pro and they get in the Super Bowl and they lose and they're sad. I would look at that and say, my goodness, I was in the Super Bowl. Hello. For crying out loud. It's but, like the silver medalist. And they yeah. go, wow, I didn't win the gold medal. Are, are you kidding me? Yeah, you you have, went to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. You competed with the most amazing athletes in the entire world. And you got a silver medal. Yeah. And, but it's, and again, that's our, our level of achievement. Think of having a pro career if you were a guy who played for 15 years. And nobody even knew who you were really because right. you were sort of in the middle of the thing. But look what you got to do. But sometimes the way we judge things was... I always look at what didn't happen. And and I think there's another thing that, like you say, even in, in the times when things are a little down, wh- where do you find the good there? Okay. Mm-hmm. So I've been looking at this in my personal life recently, too, because what, what that speaks to me is where we are attached to an outcome. Mm-hmm. We are attached to, I am going to accomplish this no matter what. And when we fall short, we go, oh, bummer. I use stronger words than that but and uh, I must be not good enough worthless it didn't work la 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 and so I'm looking at what my attachments are coming out of this whole thing where I had to literally let go of my entire life up until the last day of 2014 what I thought my dreams were what I thought my family was going to look like what I thought my future letting it go and and all the bumps and grinds to get me to do it and I realized it's like it's like a dog who has your shoe and they're not supposed and they're holding on tight to your shoe and you're saying drop it drop it drop it and and that's my that okay so that sounds weird but what i'm noticing in my life is the obstacle to my happiness is often because i i am attaching meaning to something i think i want or something i think i'm supposed to be or do or have And when I become aware that I am attached to an outcome or I am attached to an experience that I want, when I can get to a place of dropping it, and dropping it means dropping my attachment to it, (laughs) the thing that I want shows up. I kid you not. it's, It's happened to me several times in the last week. I'm like, really? But it took a lot of focused energy and attention to get to the place where I could drop my attachment. I mean, literally drop it, release it. If it never happens, I'm good because I'm happy within myself or I love myself or I respect myself or whatever it is my current mantra is. Is this is this tracking with you? Sure, it's like yeah, you go out looking, you know, especially in, in our youth, going out. Boy, I want to meet somebody. I want to meet somebody. I want. Then you're just out somewhere goofing on, and you meet somebody. It's just, it's that that when you are yeah. when you are unattached to the outcome, and, and it's, maybe the anxiety lowers whatever it is. And yeah. it's true for a business. It's mm-hmm. true for your job. It's true for any kind of relationship work. If you're currently in a relationship, and you want that person to be blah 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 or do such and so the minute you can drop it like a bone like a dog with a bone just drop it and for me this becomes like also 
uh, I can feel the energy just moving out of my body, my attachment to it. So you kind of mentally, emotionally, physically, let it all go. Now that doesn't mean that, it, so you have to, here's the other piece about this. You ha, In the practice of letting things go, it's not with even a fiber, a microfiber of thread attached to the thing you want. You have to literally cut the whole thing. And in that emptiness, in that unknown experience of what's going to happen next that's when the universe fills up that empty vessel you know fills up that empty bowl or jug or well or whatever you're going to use to bring to you what it is you most want that you probably didn't even think you wanted what it is you most need so uh it and it happens it will Okay, so we in, on Living Your Inspired Life, we talk about the creative process and how when you plant a seed on the unseen side of life, you have to let it go when you plant it over there because you can't touch it, you can't feel it, you can't, it's like just growing a tomato bush. You don't dig up the tomato seeds to go, are you growing yet? Are there roots? You leave it in the soil. Same thing in, with the creative process of life. You've got to plant the seed on the unseen side and let it go because what you're doing there is then trusting, oi, oi, the trust, the T word, but really, literally, and it's the practice in daily moments of dropping the bone, dropping it, that we begin to build our trust about the unseen side of life and that it is working on our behalf, that it already is, has activated because of our desires, which is part of the Abraham Hicks quote I read earlier, our attention then activates that thing on the unseen side that is bringing to us exactly what I want. And the worry and the fear that we walk around with on a daily basis is like you're walking around with a shovel, digging up all the seeds that you just planted, Johnny Appleseed. You can't, you can't keep digging up the trees. You have, to, you have to let it go and let it just be in that dark period of of life maybe where it may feel like nothing's happening the way you want it but you got to get to a place you gotta listen to me i'm shooting everybody Mm -hmm. in my experience when i can get to that place of letting it go 90 and i kid you not 90 percent of the time it shows up yeah and it's like it's not to say you know then people say you don't like give in or give up because if you're pursuing somebody you um continue going to social events you continue reading you continue being the polite you continue like maybe exercising whatever it is and you do that and then suddenly you meet somebody at the gym you meet somebody walking you meet somebody rather than that and so you do have to keep pursuing if you're going to be a writer the the problem i ran into with that is i started writing and people say wow this is really good you should be able to sell it and then when i couldn't sell it i got so frustrated and i threw it because that became the thing Rather than just being in process, come, somebody coming up and saying, this one's great, and you have five others. Ooh, right. And well, and that's a, that's a place of, mm-hmm. of wanting the Super Bowl ring. Yeah. As opposed to the experience of just, being in the Super Bowl. And then, of course, if you're the best, John Elway had a great, he was in this very studio. I, I got a chance to talk to him for, for a, a good amount of time. And he said, you know, I was in five Super Bowls, and I only won two. Wow. And I looked at him, <laughs> I said, what did you just say? And he started laughing. And he says, yeah. I said, you were in fives, and I only won two. I said, you won two Super Bowls. And, I, that's, and he laughed because when you look at it that way, it's a negative way of looking at something that made him possibly the greatest in his position yes. of all time. But he even said that, and he is an incredibly successful person. See, that's person. the way our culture has brought, mm-hmm. uh, has evolved. If, if we don't achieve the thing we think we said we were going to do, then, then we're totally— um, a failure you know the big f is on our forehead and Mm -hmm. everybody gets to see it which you know that's not true that's just not true so again through the processes it sounds like what we need to do is is do the meditation that's within this program that we heard earlier and listen through to that and train ourselves into that kind of well i think it's also daily asking yourself Mm -hmm. what what are what makes me happy Today, what is going to make me happy? And maybe even write down three things. Today, I am going to, you know, we had Joel Fontinos on and his, uh, his book is um, Life Contract. And he was talking about a 90-day practice of every morning and every night writing down the three things that are going to 
uh, move you closer to whatever that agreement is you made with yourself for those 90 days. I am suggesting we do the same thing about happy. How? What are three things that would make me feel happy today? And maybe it's just sitting on the ground, petting my dog, going for a walk, and eating an ice cream cone. You know, what are three things that are going to make me happy? From myself mm-hmm. to myself. Not, you know... Falling in love with a new man, right, or winning the lottery or or the Super Bowl or none of that. And finding the people that we know, uh, there's a huge percentage of people win the lottery then lose all the money because... They weren't anchored that's within what, themselves. N- that's not what they needed. Right. and they, Even though none of us would mind getting it, you do have to be the person that can have that. Or we, And we read the stories again and again, and we always hear, well, I didn't think that was going to happen to me, but... Because they they get hit with something that they they weren't ready for. Well, so this is a spiritual practice, if you will, of um, developing your your inner connection to yourself. So that if you do win win the lottery, you're going to be fine with or without that money. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so we will be fine with or without the big thing we think we need because we're going to get that we have all that we need. I have a quote from um, Howard Falco, who's on our show. And uh, and he says, no matter what has happened in your life up to this point, the same opportunity exists for you to accept that life knows better than you the reasons why you are where you are. Life knows better than you the reasons why you are where you are. You have the golden opportunity to start from this present moment anew, all the while knowing you cannot run out of time and you cannot fail. Should there be anything more? Should there be anything more exciting than knowing that there is an eternal moment of unlimited possibility in front of you? Every moment is a possibility. Every moment is an opportunity to choose to be present with yourself, to choose to love yourself, to choose to see the goodness in your life, to choose to feel gratitude, to choose to be happy. Every moment we have that. We have that as an opportunity. So why not have the practice of 2015 be daily choosing how you want to experience your happiness? I choose to experience it by being open-hearted and loving. I choose to experience it by um, hanging out with friends and laughing. I choose to experience it by by doing things that are good for my body. Well, you know, whatever it is for you. Mm-hmm. And if anybody poo poos that, I would just like to ask them: Are you happy? Are you happy? Yeah, are you happy right now? How's it working how's for it you working now? For you, and mm-hmm. that's uh, that. That's what we have to look at. So, is that three a day? I, you know, there. What would yes, be the three. practice? Well, you know, in comedy, rule of three. The rule of three. You got to do it in threes. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah. And I think that that's just so, in, in general, There, I don't know if it's some alchemic number three. Mm-hmm. You could do seven. Seven's an alchemic number. You could do eight. Eight's a prosperi- it's prosperity number, so they say. Whatever. I think three, at the very least three. Three a day. And you might even send that, set that as your goal. Or at the end of the day going, what were the three things that I experienced today that I was happy about, that I felt happiness from within myself? Not, again, not because somebody else made me happy but because i am self-generating that happiness from the inside out and i would imagine and i'll let everybody know i would imagine that it walking in happiness more often in life is going to draw more happiness to you the more you are the thing you say you want to be the more you're loving the more you run into people that are kind and loving the more you're happy, the more you run into people that are happy. The more you're a Scrooge, the more you run into people that are Scrooges. And you wonder why you're surrounded by a bunch of Scrooges. And that's the other thing uh, that works in my life is developing a support system, a network of people that are like-minded, that are doing a similar practice to mine that I can, in- I can interact with and say, whoa, you know, wasn't so happy today. Here's what I experienced is, do you see where I could have been more happy? You know, having an outside observer reflecting to me, wow, here's where you're not being happy, Susan. Oh, yeah. And I want to change that. So having a, having a support group that reflects to you, like-minded people that, re- that you respect, being uh, with yourself in the silence, <laughs> what, if it's in the car without music and earbuds or if it's a, for a walk with nature, but being as present as you can be with yourself so that you can 
it, that's a daily check-in as well, just to reevaluate where are you. And you know, a really good one to do that is if you have the chance, if you have the big pool, go swimming. Because one of the things oh, about yeah. swimming, splash, 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 go, go, go. You, you really, unless you have very sophisticated stuff, you can't. So if you have that, uh, that possibility in your life, that would be enough. But any way to remove yourself and do that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. So what is your new happy? I'm inviting everyone to, to contemplate that, think about it. Um, when this gets put on livingyourinspiredlife.org, listen to the show again and do that butterfly meditation and take some notes so that 2015 can and will be the best year ever. So this is Susan Burrell for Living Your Inspired Life, and so it is. Namaste. Namaste.